So tonight we're going to be talking about two different types of color mixing that we use in light. This first thing we've been talking about is additive mixing. So when we're talking about additive mixing, we're talking about having multiple light sources projecting light onto an object. In theater, I think the most obvious example of an additive mixing system is a cyclorama or a psych. So how many of you uh, just click yes or click no? How many of you have ever seen these lights in your theaters or used these in your theaters before? This light you see on your screen right now. So indeed, most people, most everybody. So this is, a, is, a, is an old fashioned three cell psych light, right? Each one of these cells is a thousand watts, maybe 750, but up to a thousand watts. And it has a big old piece of red, a big old piece of blue, and a big old piece of green gel in it. Right there, that's your basic primary color added, additive mixing system. But when we really start to think about how we use additive mixing in our theaters, we're using it a whole lot more than just on that cyclorama. So if you watch this little video right here, uh, unless pretty much, oops, unless every light in your show is open white, you're doing some kind of additive mixing at all times. So right now you're seeing all kinds of colors change from different angles, different angles, di colors themselves are changing, the angles of the light is, are changing, all those things are changing. But what it's actually happening on stage, both on my people and on my scenery, is additive mixing, right? I'm combining more than one source to project a color or multiple, multiple colors onto an object. So let's talk about how we can use that. In our, in our theatrical work to our advantage. In this demo, you see two lights again, right? You've got one red light, one blue light. They're overlapped a little bit further this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the red completely out, and then I'm gonna slowly bring it back in over the course of 25 seconds or so. So what I want you to look at as I'm doing this is the overlapping area. So that area we looked at that had that overlap. Watch what happens to it when I hit go. are coming in, I'm going to do the same thing again, only I'm going to slowly fade the blue light away. So here that one goes. And again, we're going to watch that overlap area as this happens. Great. So basically, the, the big thing we, we notice right there is that by varying the levels of those two colors, we're able to get a lot of different variations of that magenta. As we faded that blue in a little bit, it got a little more, as we had just a little bit of blue and a little less, we had more lavender. Uh, as we had more red and less blue, maybe it went a little bit more pink. Everything kind of stayed in that same magenta world a little bit, but by varying the intensity of those two instruments, we are able to change what that magenta was. Let's look at a slightly better, a little easier to see example of that. It's not just on a, on a stage. So I'm gonna go over to my person right here. And now I have that same two lights, right? I have a red light and I have a blue light and I'm gonna fade them in and I'm gonna fade the red light out again here and we're gonna watch what happens on the person's face. So here comes the red light out. You see, as that's fading down, that light is kind of becoming, in my opinion, a little bit more lavender. And hopefully this is reading on your screens. Obviously in real life, I would typically do this with, with lights and a mannequin or lights and a person. So especially in that lower part of the curve, we really saw that lavender until finally that person is basically fully blue. And if I bring up that light manually, a little bit at a time, you see that I can really, uh, really change what that lavender, what that magenta point is just by varying the intensity of those two fixtures. Of course, now, now he's glowing, but the idea there. Okay, so now the obvious question becomes, all right, if we're able to mix these three colors to form any color, why wouldn't we just triple hang all of our systems? Why wouldn't we have three, an RGB front light, an RGB top light, RGB side light, et cetera, et cetera? So the obvious answer to that, first of all, is we don't have the inventory to do something like that. And at first, but if we did, at first, choice, at first glance, that seems like it might be a good idea. Works really well on our psych, right? We have these giant psych lights that, that, that have R, have, have red, have green, have blue. They're able to mix together to form any color we want. But this demo right here will show you why that's not a great idea in real life. So what I'm doing is I'm moving those three lights over onto some scenery and onto that person and look at what's happened now. 
right? We have all kinds of shadows happening. We have got a red shadow. We've got basically RGB CMY shadows as things are mixing and things are coming and things are mixing together and hitting scenery and hitting people. So in the queue you're looking at right now, um, they were, they were doing a pretty decent job of making white on the floor, but as soon as you put those objects in there, it messes it all up. So this happens because the lights are coming in from three different physical locations. Even if all of them were as physically close together as we can, and I can show you exactly where they are here. Now they're pretty close, they're probably a few feet apart. If I, could, if I slid this light all the way in here, as close as I could to it, we're still gonna get those double shadows. <clears throat> Even if I slide them as close in as I can, I'm still gonna get a little bit of color separation. I'm still gonna have that issue with my shadows. So you can hopefully see right away while, why doing that would be pretty hard to do. I think, you know, I've tried, I tried it certainly when I was in high school. I was, oh, this works really well on the site. And I did a triple hung RGB top light system and very quickly realized why that didn't necessarily work super well. A lot of schools in the area that I grew up were, were designed, the venues themselves were designed with RGB strip lights above. And I'm talking like old R40 strip lights. So it was the same idea, but the shadows would be a mess. And then of course, when you're looking at a person, you're gonna have, you know, if you put a, a, those different colors on a person's face, you're gonna have multicolored shadows under a person's eyes. So that all being said, there are ways we can use that to our advantage, just maybe not with 100% primary colors. So in this demo, we're going to look real quick at two front lights. We've got a Leco here that has a warm color, R02, and a Leco that has a cool color, Li201, for example. So if we picture these two gels on our color wheel, this is just a, a color wheel that I pulled from the EOS here. Kind of a visualize where they are on that color. We'll draw a little arrow. So let's say RO2 is somewhere around right here, then Li201 is somewhere around right here. We're able to then draw a virtual line between those points. And as we vary the intensity of those two lights, we can adjust, we can basically make any color where they're mixing that exists on this line. This I've got two manual channels. I've got channel 101, that's my RO2. And I've got channel 102, that's my Li 201. So I'm going to put the Li 201, let's say, down at 50% or so, right? That's a pretty cold front light look. Pretty one-dimensional cold from the front. Now if I slowly start rolling in my warm, I'm going to zoom in on our person here just a bit so you can see this better. As I start rolling in the warm light, watch what's happening to that person. The person's becoming a little bit more neutral colored, right? So now I'm at about 30% with the warm light, 50% with the cool light. If I keep bringing that warm up more and more, now it's looking a little, it's gonna look warmer. It's gonna look like we're outside, it's gonna look like sunlight. If I leave that up where it is, and then I take my cool light down, I'm now going in the opposite direction. So with just these two lights, as I roll my cool light in here, with just these two, with just these two lights, I can get a really, really wide variety of, of basically of, of any of any color in that warm cool spectrum between those two that I want. I'll show you one more time. So there's the cool, and roll in the warm, and I roll out the cool. So that's why you see in a lot of uh, in a lot of rep plots or in a lot of theatrical plots, you'll see that double hung warm and cool front light system because by varying those intensities, I'm able to get all of these different hues that I want. Now, we still deal with the exact same issue we, that we dealt with before when we had two different lights coming from two different angles because again, you're not going to get those two fixtures right on top of each other where they're going to have, you know, perfect overlap. Even though the overlap on the floor looks fine, the, the, the angle is slightly different because they're hung in different spots. And so with, with this kind of a system, it actually works pretty decently to our advantage. Let me roll this back in for a second. This is a really hard thing to demo virtually, but if you even, even kind of look at the person's eyes in this capture file, this is kind of terrifying, but you see in their eyes, they've got two different color uh, reflections happening here. So if you visualize that kind of on the cheeks here, you've got, you know, if you had more dimension to the space, this is where that natural, the natural shadows start to get kind of filled in with slightly different colors, which is a lot closer to what we see in real life. You know, in real life, sure, we have the sunlight, we have light, we have light sources in our everyday lives, but then there's light reflecting off of other surfaces. It's going to give us slightly other variations in color or slightly other colors altogether. So by mixing these two together, I'm able to kind of accomplish that naturalism more so than I could do if I just had a single front light. And that kind of stays true even with using LEDs as your front light. You know, a lot of us now with, with all, with having all these rigs that are mostly LED, we might hang something like a Luster 2 straight on from the front. Sure, we could mix that luster to be any color we wanted it to be, 
but we are still missing out then a little bit on the dimension that those different colored shadows give us. Uh, you know, if all of our shadows are the same color on that person's face, we lose a little bit of that depth. We lose a little bit of that dimension that we would get otherwise. And then it's kind of, of course, then you have the question of do I hang a, a LED frontlight system and I double hung an LED frontlight system? And there's all these things. Um, so typically in my front light, if you've looked at a lot of my plots, I've got usually like a front fill and then everything else is happening from a box boom or from a side light or something like that. So that's kind of the, the warm, cool, the, the warm, cool kind of thing. So if we go back and we visualize this color wheel again, we can take this same example a little bit more to an extreme. We can take any two points on this color wheel, and for our purposes, let's pick two complementary points. So a complementary color is going to be something that's completely opposite of the other one on the color wheel. So let's pick magenta, for example. The complementary color to magenta is going to be green. And again, if we go back to our examples from before about how that color mixing worked, you can see how that would happen. Um, here it is again in a little bit less of a blended together view. Here's green right here. If I draw a line straight across, that's magenta. So opposite or, or excuse me, complementary of green is, is red and blue together. So I can use this same science, use the same idea to do a little bit more of an extreme example of color mixing. So here we are looking at, same thing again, two front lights, one magenta, one green. And what's happening in the center there? They're mixing together in that overlap area to form white, which is pretty cool. So there's my white, right, as my magenta and green mix. As I roll that magenta down, you can see that person is still kind of white, but now they're getting more of kind of a sickly, sickly white, a little bit more green overpowering it, until finally I'm fully green. If I do the opposite of that, if I start taking the green away, it's the same thing. I'm adjusting where that white is until eventually I'm all the way magenta. I can basically do the exact same thing with any two complementary colors. So here is cyan and red. Again, mixing together on the person, on the thing that we're trying to, trying to light to form white, but we're getting multicolored shadows and we're getting two completely different uh, colors of light behind the person. So there are times in your design work where you could absolutely use this. Dance could be really cool. You can do this in musical theater a lot. It really depends on what you're trying to go for. If you were trying to do like a, a Neil Simon comedy that takes place in an apartment, I'm probably not going to do a red and a cyan front light system because they're not going to mix together well enough on all of these objects to be able to actually form that white where I want it. I might get some white, but I'm also going to get a whole lot of red and a whole lot of cyan shadows everywhere. So that concept can work for, for any of this. That's why you see in a lot of front light systems you have those less saturated colors because we want that front light to kind of be a little more natural and to cut through our, our more saturated color wash a little bit. So that's uh, additive mixing in a nutshell, right? We have multiple sources, we're mixing on, uh, from multiple sources mixing on object, mixing on a person to form another color or form multiple colors. We've talked about how uh, shadows can be useful or hurtful depending on our purpose. And great, so let's move on to gel.